All right, so uh, it's been a while since uh, I was working on my sister's table, and uh, she's actually the camera lady right now. I don't think she knows exactly what I have in mind, so let's just get to it. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, 
Sometimes you just need gas power. <laughs>
I had my hammer or something out here. Oh, there it goes. There. Now you can take a look. What I'm gonna do, and we'll pause while I kind of do the rest of this. It'll be the same thing again, notching here, cutting through. You'll have a cut through here, so you'll actually be able to look through. But this will be one leg, one side of a table. So you'll be able to, I don't know what you'd put there. You can put whatever you want, but you'd have two little shelves with a pass through. So it'd be as if there's two legs kind of close together on each end, but it's all one solid piece. What do you think, camera lady? Is that gonna be cool for your table? It will be very cool, but I know why you had me record this now, because Sarah would not have let you do this. <laughs> what? Oh, because I was cutting like that? <laughs> With once an electric you, saw, bite... there's not as much kickback. Yeah, but, but those, you're also oh. not going to get through it in, in any quick time. That'd be burning through all my batteries and everything. So, And it wouldn't have been long enough. The bar wasn't long enough anyway. This, mm -hmm. this is, this is uh, about a 17-inch uh, diameter log right here, and that's an 18-inch chainsaw bar. Mm -hmm. So it was just the right size to get through it. Let me just add that I had the opportunity to use a gas chainsaw before an electric. And I actually bought an electric to get used to and to learn the techniques that you should be using. Uh, but just to get comfortable. Because if you're not comfortable, that's when you can kind of get hurt sometimes. Yeah. So if, if there's anybody out there that's very intimidated by a gas chainsaw... Consider an electric because there isn't as much kickback, like hardly any. It lets you learn the ropes and get comfortable and confident in your abilities. So one idea I, I think I had before, but I'm remembering or I'm inventing it right now. So you'll have your shelf here, shelf here. This is your bottom, you know, your, your bottom piece. This is your top piece that the table will be mounted onto the top of. But uh, if I do both sides, that might be interesting. Um, if at least one side has it like this uh, shooting in, the upper one could easily be, or even the bottom one too, if you're not worried about leg room on your table, uh, could be a, a place to mount a cross beam for uh, extra support, which I might do, and also a, a place to put more stuff. Um, folded up tablecloths, uh, placemats, stuff like that. I mean, it depends on if you've got a cat in the house that'll <laughs> knock everything off anyway. But um, yeah, just... Be creative. Don't, you know, don't think that you have to start with a design and, and, and stick with it the whole way through. So I, I certainly never do. <laughs> Got a design on the fly. So I've got this one drilled through. I think I had this one drilled through. And um, so I'll just be kind of doing the same thing, finishing this side up. And then I'll do that side. I'm going to wait to cut it off until uh, I've gotten a lot of weight off. Otherwise, I'll, it'll be a bear to manage, and this is this is holding it for me, so I can work on it. So I'm gonna leave it leave it attached until I've done most of the work, and then I'll cut it the rest of the way off and and bring it up to the to the shop. So anyway, um, what do you think? Should we pause it or should we call it a part one? How many minutes are we in? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. So it's gonna it's gonna cut us off anyway, probably in another five minutes. So. What we'll do is we'll make this part one of table leg.